Hi, Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and here's another interview in my series of interviews with subscribers. Enjoy. Thank you for agreeing to be interviewed. You're my second interviewer, or interviewee, I guess. I'm the interviewer, aren't I? And uh, <laughs> we're going to go through a few questions and just have a relaxing time talking about your quilting and arting and crafting experience. So uh, first I'm going to start off with, what's your name and where you're from? I'm Jeannie Eubanks, and I'm from Fairfax, Virginia, in the United States. Oh, that's great. And I'm just going to put you in the spotlight there. There we go. And uh, okay, so getting right into it. How long have you been quilting or sewing or crafting? Uh, sewing 50 years, garment sewing 50 years. Wow. Quilting six years, crafting 20 years. Okay, you've been busy, busy, busy <laughs> all those years, years, haven't you? So um, I, when I ask the questions, if I happen to say quilting, I mean everything. I yeah, mean okay. sewing, crafting and everything like that. So feel free to not just talk about quilting, talk about whatever else you'd like to talk about. So um, how did you get started in, let's, this one's more, a little more specific. How did you get started in quilting? Well, I was, for 15 years, I was caregiver for my little sister who had Down syndrome and Alzheimer's disease. And when she died, I wanted to make memory quilts out of her clothing for members of my family and loved ones. So I designed a quilt because I thought that would be, and then I realized I knew nothing about quilting. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well. <laughs> so <laughs> that led me into uh, better take some classes. <laughs> and my earliest classes were with Alex Anderson, mm -hmm. Jenny Beyer, and a local instructor named Nancy Fev. Okay. I think uh, everybody probably knows um, Alex Anderson. That's how I got started, too, was with Alex Anderson uh, as well. Um, so, okay. So you also mentioned though, that you've been sewing garments and things like that. So how did you, did you do that since you were a little kid or, you know, learn from your mother or something like that? Actually, my, uh, oh, longest term friend, Brenda, <laughs> she hates for me to say my oldest friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brenda's mother was a beautiful seamstress. And she, she influenced me a lot and she supported my efforts. And so that's how I got into it. I see. And then you also mentioned crafting as well. So is this just something you just did always did as well, along with your quilting and sewing? Not really. I never thought of myself as being creative, which is oh. interesting. Yeah. I never yeah. thought of myself that way, but um, I did get into once I became a caregiver, I got into scrapbooking because I, I wanted my sister to have a hobby, you know, with me. Right. So we did, we did scrapbooking and um, then, and I got into knitting because hmm. I had a cousin who had cancer and I wanted to knit him a hat. And once again, I didn't know anything about <laughs> knitting. <laughs> got the yarn and thought, hmm, better learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, but, uh, well, that's interesting how you got into all these different things more out of a fact you want to do something for somebody else and that forced you to learn. So that's yeah. kind of, yeah, that's kind of a unique way to go about it, I think. Um, so was there anyone in your family that influenced you in any of your crafting? Um, I would say Andy, my sister, Andy, she just is, as you know, is an incredible crafter and she's, you know, just incredibly creative and she's very encouraging. She's always encouraged me and she saw me differently than I saw myself. As I said, I saw myself as not being creative, but she always saw me as being creative. Now, Andy is another person I want to get on here for an interview and I have sent her an email. I haven't heard anything back from her. So you're going to have to work on her. Oh, I am. <laughs> so my next question then for you is, what is your favorite creation or creations and why? Something that stands out and all the things that you've probably done that is still something you really like? Okay, I, uh, I keep a, a journal. Mm. And, and uh, so I was looking through my journal and 
I realized my, my, the thing I like best is something that's not finished. It's that um, applique with a log cabin and a bear and a deer that I showed, I think on one of our crafting yeah. chats that it was, I wanted to learn to applique. So I learned to applique. I put it on a background that I left blank so that Andy can paint in the background. Mm. And then our sister Dale, who does exquisite woodworking can create the uh, frame for it. Whoa, that's and a so, real family project. And and that's, you know, it's not finished yet because I've sent my, mine off to Andy but, <laughs> <laughs> and she's working on the painting part of it. But I think that's the one that means the most to me. Yeah, I can see that. And I'm sure that sounds like it's going to be a really nice project when you have it all finished. And what a, a memory of, yeah. you know, the, the sisters all working together like that. That's that's incredible. But I know you're very close to your sisters from what you said before, too. So I think this just is something that brings you even closer together, a collab, I guess they would call it. But that's really nice. OK, so how would you describe yourself as a crafter or as a quilter? What I mean is, are you do you go more down the traditional route or do you like to do experimental or more modern kind of designs? Well, you know, it's funny. I think of myself as being fluid. Mm. Um, I My projects kind of pop up based on somebody has a, some, a special occasion coming up or something, I, you know, there's a need or somebody's asked me for something. And um, so I kind of try to suit the person. Right. But at the, by the same token, I don't like making the same quilt twice. Hmm. I know how you feel about that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and so consequently, I'm, I want to learn, I'm trying to learn something new with every quilt. And so I take the time to try to take into account what the person would like the colors they like. Hmm. And then it, I just don't, I just never know where that will lead me. I just follow her. Yep. Well, well, I like the term that you use. You're very fluid. Um, yeah. I like to sort of think I'm sort of that way too. Actually, I don't call it fluid. I call it uh, how long is something to keep my attention span before I move on to the next thing? Sort of a squirrel thing. But fluid, I like the idea of fluid because it suggests you're not being pigeonholed into one area. You you can break outside of the box, as they sort of say, and explore, you know, possibilities. And uh, I like that. I like that word. I'm going to use it. <laughs> well, you know, you, you one of the reasons I started following you was because I saw a lot of parallels between the way you're doing your journey and the way I do mine. Yeah, I never know what's going to happen truly. No. Nope. And you know, so many people, no matter what kind of art craft they're doing, they get really hung up with that final product that, you know, it's got to be perfect. And when things start to go wrong, they abandon it or they get really down on themselves. I just look at it as go, well, I learned something out of this. At least I've learned what I won't do the next time. Uh, and yeah. yeah, I like the surprise at the end. For me, it's the journey. It's not the end product. I really. think I'm the same way. I think yeah. I'm very much the same way. So that brings me to my next question. So describe your crafting, sewing work area. <laughs> How, do you have a separate one? Let me ask that question first. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is what I call a kludgy area. <laughs> and But my sewing machine is set up in my bedroom. In, and it's it's set in a sewing table and the other half of the table I could use as a desk or whatever when I need to. Right. And my ironing board is also in the bedroom I, uh, so that I can sew and iron there. But my cutting table is in the second bedroom. I have a two bedroom townhouse. Oh, okay. And my cutting table is in the second bedroom. It's a four foot cardboard table that I've had for 30, 40 years. Well, so basically your whole house is your crafting area yeah. in a sense. And there's nothing wrong with that either. So it gives you a different space. I, I find I have a couple of spaces too. And those spaces kind of 
I don't know, when you move into one from another one, you kind of get inspired or I don't know, get into a different mode of creativity. So I don't think there's anything wrong with being um, fluid in your areas of working too. <laughs> See if I do, I'm trying to work that word in here. You know, if I use it three times, it's mine. Okay, so that takes me to what's your favorite tool or technique? Something you just, you reach for all the time when you're doing crafting of any sort. That, that was a hard one because uh, I tend to like tools. So mm. I get a new project and then you know, <laughs> I see something tool. and I go order it. Yep. But there are two things that I always use no matter what. Is, uh, this grippy coating mm. on every ruler mm. so yep. that the ruler does not slip on the fabric. And the... Uh, the G Easy, um, what do you call those? Ruler stickers. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. And I I use them on every every ruler, and so there's not a project in which I don't use them. Um, yeah, you put me onto those little stickers. I bought some of those too, and yeah, I use them as well. And they're great for they're actually great for other things outside of quilting. I find too, if I want to mark. Uh, something on a page that I'm reading that I want to come back to and that I'll use them for that too. And yeah, they're great. I love them and they're reusable. They're strong. And sometimes I, I will mark, I will use a marker a Sharpie and put numbers on them and mm. use them to track piece, you know, pieces. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. They're, that's a great, and that grippy stuff. I love that grippy stuff on the ruler. I just wish it would dry a little clearer, but yeah, um, it's a little foggy. But it is great stuff, which reminds me. I think you recommended that I could spray that underneath my cushions on my kitchen chairs and it might hold them down better than what I'm using right now. And I keep forgetting. No, I, I spray on the top so that I don't slide on them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that too, I guess. I'm, I'm short and I tend to slide around on cushions. <laughs> Well, that wasn't my problem, but no, okay. I'll keep that in mind. Some small child in my house someday, I'll just stick it down on flat. No, you okay. don't want you don't want yeah. the child stuck there permanently. No, you don't, well, definitely not. But I have a blowtorch. No, <laughs> we'll get them off. Um, okay. If you had all the money in the world, what one piece of equipment would you invest in in terms of you know your crafting and your quilting and stuff like that? That's very easy. I would get a long arm quilter and to go along with it, I would get a live in quilter <laughs> to do the actual quilting. I was going to say I'd get the computer program to do it, but actually I like your idea better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But would you mind just getting over there and finishing that for me? Thanks very much, dear. <laughs> well, I, I would just throw the quilt down the quilt top down the basement and let the quilter have at it. Yep. Yep, that would be a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Um, okay, so have you ever belonged to a guild or an online group? Uh, not counting the fact that you come to craft and chat all the time, but have you ever belonged to anything that's a little bit more formally structured in terms of any of your artistic endeavors? I joined a guild when I first started quilting and I really tried, but I basically just didn't fit in. No mm. one was unkind to me or anything, but they really wanted people volunteering for mm. stuff. Yep. And, you know, I, I, my sister had died. I was, you know, mm. learning to quilt. I was yep. rebuilding my life and volunteering yep. for stuff in an organization with people I didn't know was not where my head was. Yeah. I found that too with the, when I first joined the guild, they comes, they sort of jump, jump right on top of you and want you to volunteer for everything under the sun. And you're just trying to get your feet wet. And like you, I didn't feel I belonged because I was the only man in the group. And there were some of the ladies that really resented me. Most of them are very nice, but some of them resented that a man had come into their ranks of something that was up to that point, strictly female. So I don't belong to a, a guild anymore. But um, anyways, yeah, I know what you mean by that. And you were going to say something else there. And I think I cut you off. <laughs> oh, no. Well, the other thing I was thinking was uh, the craft and chat to me is is essentially my guild now. Mm. That's the way yeah. I use it. 
Yeah, and that's actually when I created it. That was sort of what I had in the back of my mind. So, you know, a loose fitting bunch of people. I knew I would have maybe different people each time, but we've got a core of us now. And I like to think that we've become friends, everybody in there, because it's a friendly, very supportive group. So plug for Craft and Chat, first Wednesday of every month, all are welcome. <laughs> so stay tuned. Okay, uh, moving on then. Uh, where am I? I'm looking at my questions on my other computer above me or the screen. Um, okay, what's your favorite store for supplies and materials? Uh, it depends on what's going on. Right. Um, I'm ex I'm starting to explore Canadian stores, as you oh, know. You know, yeah. I've, I've purchased from Ultimate Sewing. Mm -hmm. I've purchased from what's LDH uh, Scissors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to go. I'm going to check on Peachtree. Yep. Um, in the United States, I very much like uh, a website called uh, E Quilter, mm -hmm. and they've got you know lot, uh, almost any kind of fabric you can think of. Right. And I like uh, GE Designs with Gudrun Erla. Yeah, I know both of those spots too. Now I find this is kind of funny that. Um, I don't know how many Americans actually take advantage of Canadian stores online, but my way of thinking it's to their advantage because you get more bang for your buck because your dollars are valued higher than our Canadian dollars. So, you know, if something on a website in Canada says it's uh, 20 bucks. That means it's about 16, 15, $16 American, depending on the exchange rate. So that's a good deal. Plus if you buy our fabric, in meters, you're getting three extra inches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and now I've gotten, I'm now comfortable with buying Canadian. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why more Americans don't do that. I mean, I, we always like we, I buy, a, I used to buy a lot of stuff across the border, but now with the way the dollar is and the shipping prices and stuff, I'm seeking out more and more to buy strictly Canadian because. Only rarely now. If it's something that only I can get in the States, that's when I'll break down and order it. But it's mainly just because of the, the shipping costs and the um, exchange rate. But yeah. So um, do you do a lot of shopping at places like Michael's and Joann's? None. No. I know. See, we don't have jo Joann's in Canada, but we do have Michael's. And the only time I buy anything at Michael's is if it, there's something there that I want, I can't get anywhere else. And I got a coupon because <laughs> I always find their prices just a little bit uh, inflated from well, that's how they cover their coupons. But uh, OK, so who are your favorite experts or sources for information or assistance with things you're doing? Who, who are your go to gurus? It de once again, it depends on what's going on. Um, if I. I uh, categorize them as either inspirational hmm. or technical expertise. Right. And, and most of them do both. But um, I like uh, Dale Roush, a quilting cowboy. Yeah. I like, the, I like uh, for both the technical and the inspiration. I, I mm -hmm. like the quilting marine, mm -hmm. you know, in, very, very inspirational to me. Um, I like Gudrun Erla, mm -hmm. technical, and she's inspired. She inspires me. I like okay. Bonnie Hunter. Yeah, uh, both. Um, I like Rob Appel. Well, I guess I like a lot of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we and, won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you inspire me. So you know. Oh well, thank you. For, well, I'm glad I inspire somebody out there. But all those names that you've mentioned are all ones I follow as as well. And of course, you did mention Alex Anderson with your first one. And I just recently and got a subscription to her program, um, The Quilt Show, uh, you know, and that. And I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I've been watch, trying to catch up on all their videos, but they got this, like 16 years worth. And um, she's the one that got me into quilting. I didn't know who she was. I just saw one of her patterns. I saw it as a kit and she had K facet fabrics and I really love those fabrics. And that's how I made my first quilt. And well, it's her fault. <laughs> when I took the class with her, I was the only person in the class who had never quilted. Oh yeah. And do you know, she took the time she sat at, she sat at my machine with me as she was teaching the class. Wow. 
That and then that song. way she, she could, you know, keep the pace up for the, everybody else who knew what they were doing and help me. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm watching the quilt show. She and Ricky Timms, they both seem like people you'd like to have over for coffee or Absolutely. dinner and sit and talk to them. They look very, they, they seem very genuine and very, you know, they're, they're not elitist because there are some quilters out there. Let's face it, that, you know, gotten a little too big for their britches, I think. And they, they kind of put a fear into you about trying new things because, and I don't think that's a good thing. And that's really why I'm doing these interviews as well. I'm doing it with people that, as far as I'm concerned, have as much talent as those other ones out there that we hear about. The only difference is we're not being paid to do, to do this stuff, but we still got a, a collective expertise that I think sh everybody should be able to tap into and not be afraid to make mistakes. That's why I call it the idiot quilter, because I'm making well, lots of mistakes. <laughs> well, you mentioned Alex Anderson, and I want to uh, give a shout out to the Quilter Select Products. Mm. She collaborates on those. Alex, like Jenny Doan from Missouri Star, both of them are left-handed. Mm. I am left-handed. And you would be surprised how irritating it is to be left-handed in the right in this mm. right-handed world. And yeah. uh, but therefore the quilter select products though are all designed to to uh, be equally effective for left-handed people as for mm. right-handed people. So I'm very much in love with those products. Yeah, well, that, I have heard that about the Quilter Select. I have not really ever explored them that far. But then again, I'm not looking for left-handed stuff because I'm yeah. a right-handed. What I did, well, though, right, is, I mean, they're, they're for right-handed, but, you know, also yeah. for left, yeah. But they, yeah, which is good. Well, you also mentioned, well, you put me on to them, LDH Scissors. And you said that you could get left-handed scissors through them, too. So, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, the, you know, that there's some prejudice out there against people that are left-handed in the quilting community. So I think you know. we, we only make, we make up something like 10% of the population in the world. We're not. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's probably from a, you know, financial return. Yeah. It's just yeah, that's small community. It. Yeah. Uh, the money makes the world go round mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. Okay. So do you have any challenges or goals for the future in terms of projects you might like to do? I guess I'm asking, do you have a bucket list? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to really get a handle on foundation paper piecing, mm. which I'm finding to be very tedious, very uh -huh. uninteresting. However, my friend Brenda did... Uh, she knows me very well and she knows my problems as a lefty and she suggested that I rotate the pattern 180 degrees mm. and work with it you know from left to right as it were oh that's interesting and, it, and I tried it and it's working okay huh. so I, I am teaching myself that and and she also figured out how to help me learn how to a uh, stipple do meandering. Yeah. Yeah. Free motion, free motion quilting. Yeah. In a way that works with my brain. Yeah. Okay. I never thought of that though. Yeah. I like, I like you, I find paper piecing tedious, although there are certain patterns that you see that there's only one way to do them. And that's, you know, paper piecing. I think Ricky Timms was just doing something with a, uh, was it a Mariner's compass or something like that where, no, it was a New York uh, beauty. Um, and he was doing paper piecing with it, but I could see where if you're left-handed, how, you know, that would be awkward, but turning it all the way around 180 degrees, that makes sense. That does yeah. make sense. It works. But I've never heard anybody ever say that though. So there's a first out of there, <laughs> or maybe I wasn't paying attention to it. I went, ah, left-handed, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. Um, so how would you describe yourself as an artist? And when I say artist, I mean, some people have a very narrow definition of the word artist. I do not. I consider anybody who's doing something creative as a form of art. Therefore, they're an artist. So how would you describe yourself as an artist? Well, that's interesting because that question was interesting to me. So I did talk to my friend Brenda and my friend Jen. And 
I describe myself as being intellectually curious mm. just as a person. And that transcends, you know, translates into anything I do, cooking, sewing, anything. And so quilting, it's, it follows and right. I would, I would take that same approach to things. I like to solve problems. Um, my, so my friend Jen calls me a curious seeker. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meaning you can't, you can't rely on me to follow a pattern. Or anything. <laughs> See, that's where I think you're an experimenter too. So. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend Brenda describes me as, as an organic artist. Ah, okay. And, you know, it, it, once again, I start out with a pattern and who knows what's going to look like at the mm. end. It's not going to be like it was intended to be. Right. Right. Well, I don't think any of those things are a bad thing because I think that's what keeps for me. Yeah. The experimentation and never knowing what the final product was is what keeps my brain going. And, you know, as we get older, you got to keep the brain going or, yes. you know, you're just going to be sitting in a corner drooling and I don't want to do that. So, yeah, so all those things you said about yourself, um, from what I know from our contact with each other over the last year or so, and uh, yeah, I would say those are all really good descriptions of you. You definitely have a creative spirit that thinks in a way that, I don't know, I, I don't want to use the term outside the box because everybody does that. So maybe the word organic is a good, a good term then for you for that. Okay, so my last question is, do you have any advice for anyone who just might be getting started in any art form? Yeah, I have three pieces of advice. Okay. Take a class so mm. you can get the basics and then you deviate from the basics any which way you want. Right. Uh, number two, whatever your stash, be it paper or fabric or whatever, sort it by color if possible. Mm. And the third one is forgive yourself your mistakes. Mm. And Bonnie Hunter once said that quilting is like nailing uh, jello to a pole. <laughs> and I think that really does describe, you know, fabric yep. shifts and everything. And so all of your blocks are not going to be perfect. Yeah. So get over it, move on. <laughs> yeah. I think those are three really good points for anybody starting out i think there's so many people get into a new craft they think they want to do it and they get overwhelmed by what they see other people doing who may have been doing this craft for a long long time but so i think your first point about taking a class is a really good idea because then you're in with a bunch of other people that are sort of at the same level as yourself everybody's learning and i found when i first got into quilting that's what i was doing taking classes and uh, I learned so much from the other people taking the classes as well. And it was help. And I found them all supportive, all very supportive, which was something very, very nice, I think, you know, because I was a little apprehensive. I thought I'm going to be the only guy in this class. And these ladies have probably been sewing for 100 years. And I found out some of them had been, but that didn't stop them from helping me out with it. I think maybe too, it was because I was a man. They thought, well, you're just helpless. So we'll help you, dear. <laughs> but Anyways, so do you have any parting words, anything more you'd like to tell us about anything or share anything? No, I would just like to encourage other people to participate. And you mean as in participate in the interviews? Yes. I hope others will. As you see, there was no biting or clawing or anything in this. So I, I think this is very helpful for people. That's why I'm doing, as I said earlier. I think people want to know real people who are on the same journey as they are. And, you know, we all, we all have our failures. We all have our successes and we, we do it for the love of doing it. And that's all yeah. that matters. Well, thank you, Jeannie, so much for agreeing to this interview. Um, I really enjoyed it and I know I'm going to be seeing you again soon. We still got to get Andy on here. So we'll work on her and we'll Mitzi. work on her. We'll get Mitzi as well. Mitzi can come on too. That's not a problem. Okay. So I'm going to uh, just stop the recording, but don't you go away. Okay. <laughs>